Hello, I'm Robert J. Sawyer, and this is Supernatural Investigator. This week, we delve into the mysteries of astrology. For thousands of years, people have looked to the stars for direction, believing that their movements shape our daily lives. But still, many feel that astrology is no more than a pseudoscience and a matter of superstition. Our supernatural investigator is writer and professor Leslie Choice. He travels the world to meet with people who swear by astrology for guidance on matters of business, life, and love. He challenges top astrologers to provide him with proof and asks whether astrology can be validated through science. Can the position of celestial bodies influence earthly affairs? We put astrology to the test on this week's Supernatural Investigator. Newspaper and magazine horoscope columns are like oracles, and it's up to the reader to make sense of them. To be really frank, I'm sometimes irritated that astrology actually is as good as it is. I see astrology as a, as a secret weapon, really. It's something that definitely gives us an edge. Your horoscope is like your fingerprint. Nobody, but nobody else in the world has the same horoscope as you, unless they're born exactly the same time and place. There's a common expression in astrology, as above, so below. Astrologers believe that there's a correlation between movements of heavenly bodies and life on Earth. They say that the moment you're born, the universe imprints you with a celestial pattern that will shape your world. But can astrology really work? Can it tell me precise things about my personality? Predict my fate? I teach English at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm also a writer. I've published 70 books, and like many of the characters in my novels, I'm constantly struggling with questions about the nature of existence and the meaning of life itself. Is life simply a series of random events? Or is our fate mapped out? Why would it be that at some point in my life I can struggle, I can work hard, I can do absolutely the best that I can as a writer, as a teacher, and everything, and get nothing back? Other times, I pretty much give up and say, you know, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and see what happens. And suddenly things start to fall into place. Uh, publishers accept my books or manuscripts come in from my publishing company that are, that are brilliant and wonderful. And um, I could just sit home doing nothing and the phone starts ringing. Could that possibly be this business with the stars and with the planets lining up? Is it written in the stars that I'll write the next great novel? I venture into the unknown to find out. The story of astrology began in places like this thousands of years ago. Some people believe that these Neolithic stones are linked to measurements of eclipses, lunar phases, and the rising and setting of stars. I wonder if some prehistoric man stood here, glanced up at the sky, and, like me, questioned what role the stars played in his life. A lot of ancient sites, particularly uh, Stone Age sites, appear to have some astronomical or astrological significance. What we have at Avebury is a site which ties heaven and earth together with humanity at the centre. One of the basic premises of astrology is that there's an order in the cosmos, that everything is unfolding according to some great pattern. The theory runs that if you look at an event on Earth, somehow it's going to correlate with an event in the heavens. So, if astrology can be used to determine events on Earth, has it actually been used to foresee disaster? As far as world affairs uh, are concerned, well, astrologers failed to predict the outbreak of the Second World War, but they did predict the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Soviet Union, in print, well ahead of the event, and very specifically. Western astrology can be traced back to ancient Babylonia in the third millennium BC. Under this system, the sky is organized into constellations forming symbols, each assigned a certain meaning. Over time, these constellations became the 12 signs of the zodiac. 
Well, astrology occupies a very central place in modern popular culture. Virtually everybody knows what sun sign they were born under. And depending on who you ask, I think probably 60, 70 percent of the adult population has a good understanding of the basic characteristics of their sun sign. Each of the sun signs is attributed certain personality traits. I'm in Aries, the Ram. We're said to be adventurous, energetic, and impulsive. Sun sign astrologers relate all of the interactions of the planets to one another and interpret this information to divine meanings for each of the 12 sun signs. My Aries horoscope for the week reads as follows. A critical approach will not result in a compliment. Sounds like a riddle. So what do people get from reading these small cryptic notes about their lives? There must be more to it than this.